Hey, this is Brighter Rays, and today we are looking at a study called Mightier Than We with this specific lesson called Blessing and Envy. And we're in Genesis chapter 26, looking at 12 through 17 today. Let's begin with 12 through 13, where God blesses Isaac. Despite a famine raging all around, God blesses Isaac. Isaac sowed and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Remember that? All that Abraham had had gone to Isaac. Remember that? All the riches that Abraham had received from God's hand over the years were passed on, except, of course, the, the gifts that he gave to his other children. But the rest of it was all given to Isaac. So Isaac started off a rich man. But now he's going to like an uber-rich guy. You know, he, he's, he started off wealthy, but now he is you know, really wealthy. We must be careful to think rightly here. Isaac's wealth is a blessing, not a curse. Often people fall into two, two camps when it comes to money and possessions. Either they're in the prosperity gospel camp that says that you should seek earthly wealth because God wants you to have lots of money and lots of stuff. Or people fall to the other side and they think it's holier to have little and despise those that have money. You know, to live the ascetic life, to, to get rid of everything, live, take the vow of poverty, that's more holy. So people tend to fall <clears throat> on those extremes, you know, like, well, you shouldn't have any money. You know, the pastor should have to walk around in rags and can't own a car because he has to, you know, it's like, you go, you go crazy. And on the other side, it's like, hey, you know, I should have all the money uh, that I can because that means I'm blessed by God. Well, not always. But here we know specifically that this wealth that's been given to Isaac is a blessing from God. So the warnings of the Bible uh, about money are to not serve money, but to use the money to serve. You know, which is it harder for to enter into the kingdom of heaven, a rich man or a poor person? What does Jesus say? Who can be saved? You know, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. You know, is it really harder? <clears throat> is it harder for a rich man or a poor person to get into heaven? Which one's harder? Now he says it is hard for a rich man, but is he saying that it's harder than a poor person? Because how, how easy is it to get into the kingdom of God? How, is it, how easy is it to be saved? You know, the question is not a matter of, is it easier for a poor person to get into heaven? <clears throat> I don't think that's the question. Now some people argue, well, if you're poor, you're closer to God. You know, if you're poor, you have to trust Him more. And... Uh, Okay, but how is it easy to get yourself saved? <laughs> I mean, salvation is not a matter of, of ease or difficulty. Because with man, because that's what Jesus says, with man, this is impossible. It's impossible for a rich man to get into heaven. But the same is true for a poor person. It's impossible for a poor person to get into heaven. But with God, all things are possible. So we need to think rightly about that. Because sometimes, when, you know, you, you, I've read stuff too about even people who I respect. And they're talking about how it's easier for a poor person to get into heaven. Like, wait a minute. No, it's not. It doesn't matter who, how much money you have. You know, <laughs> what does that matter? If it's, if it's grace, if it's all of grace alone, through faith alone, then it doesn't matter how much money you have. Now, it might be easier for the person to follow God if you have money or not, depending on who they are. But, um, you know, I don't think the money is really the key here. So, yeah, you can have money. You can have lots of You can be a rich person and be a Christian. Okay? And, and, a, and a faithful Christian and, and, and obedient. You don't have to be the prosperity people where it's all about your money and you need more stuff. You know, it's, and that's a lot going on in the woke church, too, is all this, oh, I need more stuff. Give me stuff. You know, I didn't have stuff in the past. My... My great-grandparents didn't have stuff in the past, so that's hurting me, so I need more stuff. Like, why, why do you need more stuff, you know? That's not the answer. You need to be more obedient to Christ. That's, that's the answer. So, uh, but yeah, with salvation, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not because you have money that makes it hard for you to get in heaven. It's because you're a dirty, rotten sinner, and you don't want to obey God. That's why it's hard. That's why it's impossible for you to get in heaven. You have to be saved. <laughs> You have to be rescued. You don't rescue yourself. So let's move on to verses 14 through 17. 
Now, at the end of this section, we find Isaac blessed, and the Philistines are in envy of him. As Proverbs 14.30 says, envy makes the bones rot. And so they cannot tolerate the presence of Isaac anymore. Just seeing him with all of his wealth and God's blessing him and, he, and he's harvesting a hundredfold and they're like, man, I really, man, I wish I was like Isaac. I want to be like Ike, you know. <laughs> but uh, so that envy just gnaws at them. He, he's, look at, he's getting everything. Well, this is our land. So this envy, along with some probable fear then, leads the people to say to Isaac, go away from us. You're much mightier than we. This echoes the Egyptians during the time of Moses as they saw the blessing of God upon the Israelites and they said, behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. You see, when God pours out his temporal and spiritual blessings upon his people, the world takes notice and it drives them crazy. Isaac listens to the people. Instead of stirring up trouble, he maintains the peace by moving into the valley of Gerar and lives there. So he moves away from the city, down into the valley, gets away from them, puts some space between him and the people. He's trying to live as a peaceable man. He's trying to make peace with the people. He doesn't want to start a war, which is kind of what they're worried about. Um, so he's trying to move away. You know, he's, he sees, obviously, what's going on. He knows that the people are envying him. He knows that they're getting angry. They come to him and say, hey, you got to get out of here. We don't like you anymore because <laughs> you got too much stuff. You're doing better than us in our own land. Um, and so you need to move on. And so he moves on. That's, that's what he does. Doesn't stir up trouble. He is a God-honoring man and says, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll give up this land. I'll move farther. That's fine. Um, cool. Let's do it. God's, God promised to bless me. So he did. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> think about that. I mean, sometimes with money, things people get kind of weird on both sides. And so I've uh, got to remember that. That uh, the money here was a blessing to Isaac. But it also caused the envy of the people. So the blessing brought trouble in the world. And that often happens to Christians too. And when we're blessed by God, uh, the world takes notice. They see that you're being blessed, that things, good things are happening for you. And they don't like that. They don't like when good things are happening to, to godly people. And so they try to come up against you just because you're being blessed. Because you're doing, you're, you might be minding your own business. And then you get starting to get attacked. And it's like, why am, I, why, why am I being attacked? Why do these people care? That's because they envy you because God's blessing you. Now whether they know it's God or not, that's debatable. They they might, they might. Whether it's you know consciously or subconsciously, they might be realizing like, hey, this is not normal. <laughs> this is <laughs> what they're doing is the same thing I'm doing, but yet they're getting a huge return and I'm getting nothing. You know that's not fair. So that happens it happens today it happens to all of us if we're following God and God blesses you, especially if it's a temporal blessing. People see those things and they're like, hmm, I want that. How come I can't have that? It's not fair. And they want to try to steal it from you. Or they might want you to just leave them alone. You know, you got to move away from me because I don't want to see you. We're not friends anymore. So that happens. Be aware of that. Keep an eye out for that. Because <laughs> nothing new is under the sun. So it's going to happen to you probably. If you're following God, if you're not, then, uh, you know, you probably don't have to worry about that. But if you are following God, then you probably have to be careful of that. Just know that um, when God blesses you, people are not going to like that. Satan is not going to like that. And you're going to have some things come up in your life and it's going to be in trouble. But don't be surprised by the fiery trial, Peter says. Um, know that it's coming, but then know that you're blessed. So you're the winner. All right, well, that's the end of that study for today. Come back next time and we'll look at the conclusion of our study.